Hi, this is Rich Bowen. On the second day of the project team's gathering in Dublin, I spoke with Melanie Witt and Matt Reederman about what's coming in the Nova project in Rocky. So let's let's start with, with introductions. Melanie? Um, I am Melanie Witt, and I work for Red Hat, and I work on the Nova project. My name is Matt Reederman. I work for Huawei, and I work on Nova. So the, the last time that we spoke, um, there were a few new things that were going to be in this cycle, but mostly it was about stability. Is that is that I remember I remembering correctly? Yeah, that's right. Um, we were working on Sol V2 multi cell support, um, lots of placement work with nested resource providers, and um, we got a lot done in, in Queens for that. And we've also added some new features in Queens too that um, we'd like to share. All right, um, jump right in, tell me about it. <laughs> okay, um, one of them is that we have support for vGPUs, basic support um, in Nova now. Um, before Queens, uh, we had only PCI pass-through support wherein um, entire PCI devices could be passed through to the guest. Um, now we, we can actually support vGPUs, and so um, that means if you have like a physical GPU, you can, um, it can be virtualized into multiple vGPUs. And so um, now admins can define flavors that um, can request a number of vGPU resources. Um, and that, that's the basic support that we have now. And um, upcoming work will include adding NUMA awareness and uh, the ability to associate traits with VGPUs so that um, people will be able to specify like types of VGPUs also when they um, request them. And uh, another feature that we have uh, in, in Queens is native QMU um, Lux decryption. So uh, with the required versions of QMU and Libvirt, um, QMU 2.6 and Libvirt 2.2.0 and the encryption type of LUX, um, we can now do encryption natively through QMU um, instead of going through the OS brick encryptors, uh, which use uh, calls to deencrypt as root. Um, and so now, like since QMU can do the encryption natively, it's um, it will run as QMU. Um, so. If you have the, those required versions of QMU and Libvirt, then the Libvirt driver will generate a secret that it will use as the passphrase to um, unlock the volume. And then it'll pass that to the volume driver to generate the required encryption XML. And then that will, QMU can use that to read and write um, to the encrypted volume natively. So with that, um, you are able to get encrypted RBD volumes, which is something that um, people have really been interested in. And um, Matt can can tell you more about like other features that we've got um, for Inkling. Yes, the probably the biggest user facing one is volume multi attach support. That's something that's been asked about for years. Um, that's the ability to attach a cinder volume to multiple server instances in Nova. Um, that's something that the Nova and cinder teams have been working on for at least three or four releases now. In Okada and Pike and in Queens, the cinder team did a lot of work on their API and how they track volume attachments. And this has kind of been a major effort between the projects because cinder originally was split out of Nova volume the no volume service. So there's a lot of technical debt between the projects as far as um, not having a very clearly defined API abstraction between the two projects, the two, the two services. So as a leading up to the volume multi-attach stuff, we wanted to change how the attachment tracking worked between the projects. So it took a long time because we were doing kind of a major architecture redesign. And a lot of that all wrapped up in Queens and the actual user facing end result for the multi-attach support landed. Um, the In Queens, the liver driver in Nova supports multi-attach, and there's a few Cinder volume drivers that support it. So LVM 
SolidFire and Oracle ZFS support multi-attach on the block storage side. And there's docs in both Nova and Cinder for how you deploy it, how you support it, and if you can't support it yet, how you can disable it through policy. Um, there were a couple other API-facing changes in Nova that are you know, worth mentioning, which is one is that you can rebuild your server and provide a new key pair. So if you need to ro rotate your key or if the server is owned by somebody else in the project and you need to put a new key pair on it, you can do that now. Another thing is that admins can specify a target host when doing the cold migration. And then there were just some uh, API performance and efficiency improvements that we made for large deployments. So doing multi-cell, just existing large deployments. So there were some um, long-standing sort of performance issues in the API that we knew about, and those got fixed and cleaned. So what about looking forward to Rocky? Is there, are there, uh, I know it's still early in the week, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that a lot of this has already been discussed, right? Um, somewhat. Uh, we're That's kind of like the purpose we're going to have the next Wednesday through Friday um, here at the PTG is to discuss specs and um, work that we're going to do in Rocky. Um, one, one spec that's already been approved that we're going to work on is um, to use Neutron's new port binding API. And uh, the motivation behind that is to solve some problems with live migration that we have. Um, with the new API, we'll be able to um, bind the port earlier for the, on the destination host um, instead of having to wait until the migration is finished to do it. So that way, like, if the port binding fails for some reason, um, we can fail fast and early before we migrate anything, and that'll be um, communicated to the users a lot sooner. You don't know, have to wait until it's already migrated. Um, and then it'll also enable live migration um, across different networking backends. So if you've set up like a new ML2 backend um, and you want to live migrate instance like over to it, you'll be able to do that um, once we're using the new port binding API. Um, and Matt can, can tell you some more about like some other things that we're going to work on in Rocky. So one of the things that we've seen is that with the Newton branch now being end of life upstream uh, and in Okada, cells v2 was native to Nova. Everybody has to deploy with cells v2, at least a single cell and place the placement services required starting in Okada. So Newton is now end of life and we're starting to see deployments upgrading to Okada and Pike. And um, so they're starting to adopt cells v2 and placement. And especially for the large cells v1 deployments like CERN, for example, <laughs> they're, um, they're upgrading. And one of the main differences between the legacy cells architecture and the now native cells v2 architecture is the old one had sort of a, it was a two tier scheduling. So the, there was a top level cell scheduler that would pick a cell, and then within the cell, they would pick a compute host. With cells v2, that's all flat. And so these large cells v1 deployments like CERN had done things in the top level cell scheduler for performance and efficiency things and just for their, some of their own use cases that they have for their users. And now that they're upgrading and they're starting to migrate to cells v2, um, they're you know, either running into some performance things or just things that are specific to their deployment and their use cases. And so we're working with the CERN team and um, some other large teams like GoDaddy on you know what are the what are the things that they're seeing? So it's really cool that people are actually upgrading, migrating to this stuff that we've been working on for a couple of years now. They're starting to use it, and you know they're finding problems, but that's good because then they're actually coming back to us, and then we're working together on figuring out. Now that we've got this foundation, what can we do as far as solving these issues so that we can make the migration easier? And, and are people typically my, uh, upgrading just one version, or they? coming all the way forward, or what do you see? Um, I think it's a mix. I mean, there's there's still like the fast forward upgrade stuff yeah. that's going on. And people are sort of rolling through it. I know Oath has done a Juno to Okada yeah. fast forward upgrade. I mean, they rolled through each release, but they got it done, so. Yeah, they, they've shared some of their learnings from that in the fast forward upgrade room or track. Um, so yeah, we, we have de deployers that do the fast forward upgrades, and then we have people that sort of stay on the bleeding edge to like Vex host. Yeah, they they're 
just upgraded the pike recently? Or? So Vexhost, yeah, Vexhost upgraded the pike about one week after the pike was released, which was kind of unheard of. I mean, amazing to see, which is awesome. It also goes to show how much automation they put into their deployment. So. And that went well for them? Yeah, it, I mean, and the other cool thing is that um, when they actually find issues, they bring them forward and they, they point it all out and, you know, they even go so far as to provide fixes for some things. So it's not only just reporting the problem, it's also being there to say, to triage it and provide a fix and then say, you know, this is the fix, we backport it for them and then they deploy it into their public cloud, which is, you know, an awesome sort of feedback loop. There's a community goal in Rocky for removing this, like this old Mox usage library. Mox is a, um, it's for stubbing out things in unit tests and the technical committee has just done a community goal in Rocky so that all projects will get rid of this dependency on this Mox thing and start using some of the native stuff in Python standard library. So if there's like new contributors or part-time contributors that are looking for a way to help that's not committing to like a you know a six month major feature or something like that. They can just come in and get involved in that kind of and it's also a good way to sort of figure out the code base just because you're going through and you're updating tests and stuff like that. So well thanks again and uh, good luck in your meetings this week. Thanks. And I'll see you wherever we are next time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.